So now another one of the highlights of the program, the contract signing between this, Roman Reigns. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say this was the true highlight of the show. If I was going to well, be honest. But actually, I th- this should have actually been the main event spot because then they baited and switched us on the. But they wanted this for the nine o'clock that's, hour. I'm that's exactly sure. it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, the contract signing Reigns with Heyman versus Finn Balor for SummerSlam, that big main event that Reigns has accepted. And again, you know, Balor comes out. Well, I love Finn Balor. He's a star. But no, I won't say people expected this to be changed, but nobody would have expected that Finn Balor is going to be beating Roman Reigns at this point in time. So Reigns and Heyman come out. Paul has lost weight. He's down to only one chin. One extra chin, I should say. Awful. Um, But the thing about Heyman, besides his his verbal fucking brilliance, his whole body language in the way that he comes to the ring with, or is around Roman reigns is perfect screams, toady and stooge it's deferential. And, and it's, you know, it just, it, it, he's a perfect fucking weasel. Um, reigns did a great promo. He belittled Finn Balor, in a backhanded way by referring to what Cena said, you know, Cena said he accepted this match because you didn't want to face me. Well, that must mean that Balor is less than Cena in his eyes, doesn't it? Mr. Balor, blah, blah, blah. The material is not only believable from him, what he's saying. And of course, cause Heyman's standing there. So it, what it there, Roman Reigns is not going to be saying anything stupid. That's not believable, but also he does it naturally like it's his to begin with. He's thinking of it. And after, you know, he basically rakes Balor over the coals and Finn answers back a little bit and goes to sign the contract and Corbin, Corbin out of nowhere. Fuck it. Here's Corbin dressed in the same shit that he was dressed in. I mean, my God, you know, I remember the story that, that Vince told when he was on his way to bankruptcy court. Uh, the first time that he declared bankruptcy back in the early eighties, him and Linda, when he was running that Cape Cod Coliseum, he'd still gone and got a fucking, like a $30 manicure to go to bankruptcy court. And Bruce Pritchard asked him why one day he said, why you, I can't live like a savage. So at least Corbin could fucking button his shirt up for heaven's sake, even if he is bankrupt. So he comes out. And beats a teetotal shit out of fucking Finn Balor and tosses him out into the crowd. And thanks for coming, Finn. Did you notice we never saw Finn Balor again? As a baby face, he was, he was jumped from behind by an underneath guy when he was at a contract signing for the main event title match at SummerSlam. He got the shit kicked out of him, tossed over the barricade into the crowd, and we never saw him again. So. Here's your pile of dog shit, Mr. Balor. Anyway. By the way, when that happened, when Baron Corbin attacks Balor, the officials, uh, Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville, they reacted with horror. Heyman, you know, didn't know what to do. Reigns just sat back and watched. Yes. It was, it was perfect. Never moved. Never moved. Never. He was just leaned back in his chair. Not quite as far as I am now, but leaned back. So anyway, Balor gets shit canned and then Corbin grabs the contract that's been dropped that Balor didn't sign and goes to sign it. And I'll get the boom, boom, boom. And here comes Cena and the people fucking blow. And Cena slides in and fucking kicks the shit out of Corbin and shit cans him and grabs the contract and signs it. And the people go crazy. And Rain sits there in the chair, and the only thing that changed was his facial expression. He didn't move, but his expression went from he was pleased to be there at the start, he was amused when Corbin hit the ring, and now he's fucking pissed. And now he's also pissed and worried. It The, the whole Corbin involvement, and it was preposterous, but superbly done, I thought. And it got to fucking people. I thought this was great, and I thought, first of all, Roman Reigns and Heyman are so fucking good together. Like you said, even when Heyman doesn't talk, 
His mannerisms, the lack of mannerisms, whatever it is, always perfect. I will say my cable box gives me the option to fast forward 30 seconds at a time on DVR. I think I hit it seven times from the moment Roman came out to when he got in the ring. <laughs> Took him a while to get there. But this was this was really good. And the only I mean, like you said, the only bad thing is Balor. I guess we're gonna get Corbin and Balor. I don't know if that's a SummerSlam match or just next week on SmackDown, but he was just tossed out to the trash. But we get Cena and Reigns. Same show you're gonna have Goldberg versus Lashley. Those are two valid main events. And then they followed it up uh after the break backstage. Heyman comes up and confronts Pierce and Sonya Deville about, you know, what are you going to do about this? And Pierce delivered the perfect line. Hey, it's good enough for me. Of course, it, I thought this was a slip up possibly here on Paul's part or just a, a slip up of the way he said it. The way he phrased it was, what are you going to do about this? I mean, it was good for the people and everything, but Finn Balor's name is on the contract, but it's John Cena's signature. Just to make it a, even a little less see-through, and it wouldn't have been a big change, and they could have all said almost the same thing, I would have had Pierce say, look at this contract, Mr. Heyman. It doesn't have Finn Balor's name anywhere on it. <laughs> and like they, they fucking were trying to zoom reins to begin with. Because if it was a contract for Finn Balor to face Roman Reigns, then if John Cena or goddamn Peter Rabbit signed it, it but if it was a a contract with no names and they both signed it, they could have they could have got that by a little better that way, I think. But otherwise, do you play with this until SummerSlam? I know it's coming up pretty soon, but do you play? With I think I think Paul's got to get a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and I mean, I'm sure he knows a number. So most of them have probably been an adversarial relationship, but nevertheless. Because <laughs> at one point, McAfee yells out, I think, you know, will it be ratified? <laughs> and I was like, oh, will yeah. it be? It's a contract, <laughs> not a constitutional amendment. <laughs> uh, I still can't believe they ain't got McAfee in the ring for something. I want to see him wrestle again. Anyway, what's next? It's your show. I don't know. What was next on SmackDown? Oh, I forgot. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> It was a six-man tag team match, or as they say over on AEW, a trios match. Um, Big E made an entrance, and then that Boogs started playing the guitar for Nakamura. Cesaro was already down there. I fast-forwarded through Boogaloo, Boogaloo Boogs, and it, it was apparently Nakamura, Cesaro... And Big E with Boogs against Apollo Crews, Bobby Roode, and Dolph Ziggler with Commando Sleaze in the corner. What is his name? Major Meat? Major Guns? Major... Yeah, I'm not sure, but he got the haircut from the girl in Bow Wow Wow. <laughs> Bow Wow. Anyway, they started the match, and after 30 seconds of the match, after we'd heard that awful guitar playing and screaming from this Boogs character and all the interest, blah, 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 we got... 30 seconds of a match and went to the commercial. So I just never came back. Uh, they came back from the break, but I didn't. I've skipped on to the next segment involving a star. What did I miss? What's his name? Boogs? Boogs. Boogs got involved. In the, in one point. It was so ridiculous. I wish you would have watched this. He stood up on the stairs and just started playing guitar and it distracted the heels and that led to the baby faces getting the one. Well, normally I think that was a bogus method of distraction, but the way he plays guitar, it would distract you. Do you think we're going to get a Boogs Elias feud? I don't know what the fucking issue is with either one of these guys, but a Boogs makes me want to see Elias. Because this guy's way further over the top than Elias. So Elias was boring, but Boogs is annoying. Anyway. Someone said... Let's think of a gimmick that didn't work. I know, Man Mountain Rock. Let's try it again. Oh, I hadn't thought of him <laughs> in my God. What was his name? Daryl Peterson? Peterson? Daryl Peterson. Yeah. Nice fucking guy. Gimmick did not work. Nice guy. 